congratulations on your new bike day. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know to assemble your new or certified pre-owned bike from TPC. Before we get started, you might need a few tools, not much. You need scissors or wire cutters, and it will make your life a lot easier if you have a metric hex wrench set or bike multi-tool. You also need the torque wrench, which comes included with your TPC bike and your pedals of choice because bikes don't ship with pedals. 90% of our bikes will ship in a box just like this. There are a few exceptions. If you've ordered a TT or triathlon bike, a large e-bike or a downhill mountain bike, it might ship in a larger box and be packaged a little differently than what you see here. But the tips from this video should still help you assemble your bike. Now, before we get started, you want to assemble your bike in a clean work area. You don't need a fancy workbench. You could do this in your kitchen, garage, whatever. And you just want to you know, a clean space so you don't lose any of the parts. And then we also recommend you do not throw anything away that's in the box until you've finished assembling your bike. So inside the box, we're gonna have your bike. And I'm gonna pull the bike out here and set it on the ground. But the other thing you wanna keep an eye out for is this green Mylar bag. Now this bag is gonna have all of your small parts and accessories that come with your bike. Do not lose this, and we will open this later to see what is inside. All right, so now that we have the bike out of the box, I'm gonna put it in a work stand. You don't need to use a work stand. It just makes your life a little bit easier if you have one, and it's gonna be easier for me to show you what I'm doing. To do that, I'm gonna raise the seat post. Now, every bike is packed a little bit differently, but most bikes are gonna have the seat post still in the frame. If that's the case, then you can raise it by loosening the clamp or the seat post wedge. And I'm gonna do that here and raise this a little bit, just to give me some room to put this bike in a work stand. So as you can see, we try to minimize the amount of foam and packing material we have on these bikes, but we still do use some. So mostly the bike is gonna have foam protecting areas where parts are contacting each other or the bike is touching the box and then everything will be zip tied together to keep it secure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut away the zip ties. Now, you don't wanna cut away anything that isn't a zip tie. Um, for example, if you have a Shimano Di2 bike, there are electric wires connected to your derailleurs. Be very conscious of those, do not cut those. So we're gonna cut away first this front wheel. Most bikes that we ship are gonna have the front wheel removed and zip tied to the side of the bike like this. One thing you wanna keep in mind is that the crank arm is slotted into the spokes like this to conserve space. It will be protected, so there should be no damage here, but we wanna be conscious of this when we're removing the front wheel. So I'm gonna take away this piece of foam right here. And remember, don't throw anything away until you've finished assembling your bike. So we're gonna be very careful not to cut the tire or any part of the bike here, just the zip ties. And then I'm going to slide the front wheel gently off the crank arm. And this foam packing I will remove. Now, what we're gonna remove from the front wheel here are these hub protectors. These keep the wheel safe in the box. And one thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the end cap of your hub can get stuck on these hub protectors. So keep an eye out for that. If you find out you're missing an end cap when you try to install your front wheel, that might be where it is. I'm gonna set the front wheel aside for now. I'm going to remove the remaining foam from this bike. In this case, we have a zip tie holding on this little fork protector. I'm gonna cut this away. Remove the fork protector. Now that we have all the foam and zip ties removed, we're going to put on the front wheel and straighten out our handlebars. Now it depends on the bike how the handlebars will be packed in the box. In some cases with drop bar bikes like this, the bars might be flipped up 
In this case, they are flipped down with mountain bike handlebars. They could be turned, they could be removed entirely. It depends on the situation, but in most cases, it's pretty easy to get them back where they need to be. I'm gonna flip this bike around so you can see what I'm doing when I move these bars back into the correct position. This might be a good time to mention the bike checklist on this bike. Now this checklist includes all the small parts that are inside of that green bag we mentioned earlier. So when you're assembling your bike, you can take a look at this and make sure that all these parts have been included with your bike. Now bars on most bikes are clamped to the stem using four bolts just like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure these bolts are loose enough for the handlebars to move. So lefty loosey, righty tighty, we're gonna loosen them by turning them counterclockwise. And this will let us rotate these bars and pull them out like this. Now I'm gonna gently tighten these, but I'm not gonna fully tighten them. To do that, we're gonna use the torque wrench that comes with our bike. We'll do that as the last step. But for now, I'll put these like this just to keep the bars out of the way. And then we're gonna put on our front wheel. So the vast majority of the bikes that TPC sells are going to be modern disc brake bikes with a through axle. The through axle is the axle right here. It should be installed on your fork. If not, it'll be in that green bag. We're gonna remove the through axle first. So in this case, I need a six millimeter hex wrench to remove this through axle. Different through axles have different specs. Some might need a smaller wrench. Some might have a lever that you use to loosen it. We're gonna take it out. Now, the next thing we wanna take out is this cardboard spacer. This piece of cardboard is just stuck between the brake pads. This ensures that during transit, the lever, if it gets squeezed, it doesn't compress the pads and get them stuck together. Now, when there's no front wheel in your bike, do not pull your front brake lever because we wanna keep those pads spread out. Now we're gonna install our front wheel. To do this, we're going to make sure our brake disc, our brake rotor is aligned with the caliper and then that the end caps of our hub are aligned with the dropouts of the fork. And we're going to slide it right up like that. Then we're gonna slide our through axle back in and screw it in. And we're gonna tighten it. You don't need to go crazy tight, but we do suggest giving it at least one good oomph just to make sure it's secure. So now that we have the front wheel on and we have our handlebars positioned where we want them, we're gonna do a final bolt check with our included torque wrench. I'm gonna torque all the stem bolts and the seat post collar bolt. Your torque wrench should come with different size bits. The vast majority of stems and seat post collars are gonna use a four millimeter, sometimes five millimeter bit. And this torque wrench is preset to five Newton meters, which should work for the vast majority of stems and seat posts. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the faceplate bolts on the stem, which are holding on the handlebars. Now, when we tighten these, we're gonna use a cross pattern. It means if you start here, you're gonna go down and across to the next one, then up to this one, then down finally to this one. And we're gonna to torque these a little bit at a time, just because we want the gaps on the faceplate to be fairly even. So tighten a little bit at a time. And then when we are ready to actually do the final torque, you should be able to feel your torque wrench click just like that. That lets you know you've hit five Newton meters. All right, now these bolts are properly torqued. We also wanna check the clamp bolts right here. And these are five millimeters, so I'm gonna switch out the bit. We're gonna make sure these are tight. Got a nice click there. And this one is on the other side. that is torqued now. Your cockpit should be fully torqued and ready to go. And then the final piece we want to torque is your seat post collar. You should do this after you've set your ideal saddle height. If you don't know how to do that, we have a video explaining how to find a good starting point for your saddle height. And some bikes 
They might not have a collar. They might have a seat post wedge. Those are pretty easy to identify. They won't have this ring here. They'll have a bolt either on top, below, or behind that you can tighten to tighten your seat post wedge. And this same thing, we're gonna find the correct size bit and just use the preset five Newton meter setting on our torque wrench and just tighten it. All right, now that we've checked and torqued all of our bolts and checked our accessory bag for any small parts or accessories, your bike should be just about ready to ride. Now, before you go outside, you will need to install pedals on your bike, whatever pedals you prefer, because our bikes don't come with pedals. And if you don't know how to install pedals, we have a video explaining that also. I'll link that in the description below. The other thing you might want to check is the air pressure in your tires. We do ship bikes with some air in the tires, but it's always a good idea to check air pressure before every ride. Hopefully this made it easy to assemble your bike. If you have any questions, if you are missing any parts or having trouble with your bike, do not hesitate to reach out to our ride guides by phone, by chat, or by email. If you can, include a photo of what's missing or what you're struggling with, and they will be ready to help you out and get you riding.